recording. So welcome everyone. Um, my name is Shilpa Jain. Uh, I serve as the executive director of YES, which is a 30-year-old organization based in uh, the Bay Area in California, in the U.S. Um, YES works at the meeting point of personal, interpersonal, and systemic transformation. And uh, a lot of our work focuses on creating spaces where we can do the inner work and the healing and liberation work that's necessary for each of us. It focuses on building bridges, especially across the divides of race, class, gender, nationality, sexuality, religion, and any other kinds of things that separate us, um, really trying to invite us into deeper relationship with each other and communications and working on conflict is a big part of that. Um, so we'll get to talk a lot about that today. And then we also work on systemic transformation that as, you know, there's an old saying that hurt people hurt people. And a, another way to kind of think of that is that hurt people hurt people and then they create systems that hurt people. Uh, healing people are healing people and they are creating systems that are healing people. And so a lot of what YES is trying to do and I try to do in my work is support that greater uh, interconnected healing that's possible and support us to develop systems, economic, political, social, educational, um, how we relate to the ecology, how we relate to each other, all the systems of life that can really be serving us in healing, interconnection and liberation. So that's a little bit about me. I was hoping that each of you would be willing to put into the chat your, your name, um, the gender pronouns you use. If you can also include that in your name tag, that's really helpful just so we correctly and honestly and, and respectfully identify people. Um, so your name, your gender pronouns, your location, where you're calling from, um, your area of focus or organization, and one thing that's brought you here today, an intention that you might have, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that, that list so you don't have to memorize it all um, into this uh, chat function. So give me a second here. All right, there it is. So folks can start filling that in. We can just see who all is here with us today. Um, and give a moment to, to welcome each other and ourselves a little more here. And as you finish and complete, you can start reading also the other folks who are here. I think we have a quite international group with us, which is so beautiful. I keep trying to sit with all of the gratitude that's come in this time of COVID. And uh, one of the gratitudes I have is how many more connections there are for people across uh, different geographies. And so welcome to each person here. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing your intentions also. I'll just start to lift up some of these intentions here. Intention to break through. Great, that's the title of the workshop. So I hope we get some of that from breakdown to breakthrough. Uh, see an intention to seeding the world. It's coming to be some actions here. Something after the breakdown, looking for that. Gathering tools. Hope to offer you a lot of tools in this time. And hopefully we can offer each other many tools that we also use here to be in community with healers and that beautiful intention to learn and practice, develop and support myself and others. It's an intention towards breakthroughs, towards solving conflicts in a community of practice. Wonderful. Thank you all. We'll take another minute here for folks to put in whatever you want to share. Your location, your gender pronouns, your intention, any area of focus you have. Lots of intentions to learn and show up, better relationship. Wonderful.
a lot of intention to learn tools, it's openness to sharing in new regenerative ways, learning behaviors that heal. Wonderful. Thank you all. And those can continue to come in. And if other intentions come up for you during the course of this time, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I want to invite us to collectively hold these intentions. These are our collective intentions. And so all the ways that you can show up and support one another to meet each other's intentions, I just really want to invite that. Um, I do a lot of my work focuses on the container that we create. And I'm very clear that each one of us plays a vital role in making that container something that can help us to move towards our intentions and really find our way forward. And um, yeah, intentions are also very different for me from expectations. So uh, the intentions are in your hands. So I, I support you in that. Uh, please don't put it on me. <laughs> I won't be able to meet all of that, but I know that collectively we can do it together. So um, I wanna offer us just a couple agreements as we get going here to support our, our time together. Um, and I'll just put up a quick little slide here. Can you all see that agreements for the call? Yeah. So just a few, just brief agreements. I'm sure these are pretty familiar for folks. Just good to name them, make them visible. Um, you know, just the agreement of one person speaking at the time, at a time. We have one mic, y'all have learned in Zoom, doesn't work well with many people talking at once. Um, there's a, a request and agreement to share from your own experience. So speak from the I rather than you know when you think or we all feel. Maybe just take the risk to say this is how I feel. This is what's happening for me. Um, confidentiality is another agreement that's requested. So just as we get into small groups and are hearing more of each other's stories, just really honoring each other's confidence in that. Um, honoring yourself and others. It's totally up to you how much you want to share, what you want to offer. Uh, if something doesn't work for you, please take care of yourself, you know, really take care of yourself and others and, and then respectfully being with others um, in their journey. And then our last agreement around just deep listening. Um, it took me a while to understand that those were little ears attached to that heart. So but just really inviting you to, to share and listen from your heart and invite that listening, which is such a cornerstone of transforming conflict. I'm sure you all have been seeing that over and over again in the summit. Um, are these agreements agreeable to anyone, everyone? Anyone not agreeable to these agreements? And if not, if you could unmute and just share if you need a modification or something else. Okay, I see some thumbs up. Thank you, you can use your thumbs up as well. Wonderful. Okay, well, without further ado, now that we have some of our stage set for doing what we're here for, I wanna invite you into a little uh, theater of the oppressed exercise. This comes from Paulo Freire's work and Augusto Boal's work in Brazil. Augusto Boal being the main sort of originator, but then many, many people in the tradition of theater of the oppressed. And so I wanna invite you, if you're willing to just kind of shake out your body a little bit, we wanna tap into some of our body wisdom and imagine yourself, if you want to close your eyes, you're welcome to, or soften your gaze. Imagine yourself as a piece of clay. And I'm going to offer you some different words. And without thinking, just allowing your body to form an, a shape. You know, it might be like a little sculpture, essentially, that you're creating. That is for you what comes up for you when you hear that word or that phrase. All right? And then I'll invite you to open your eyes, and you can take a look around. Hold your shape. Notice the other shapes, and we'll just take a moment to sort of see what's here in our bodies when we come up with some of these words that are really essential to this, to this uh, workshop. Does that sound good? All right, wonderful. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Go ahead and shake out a little bit. You can close your eyes. And the first word I wanna offer you is fight. What word, com what comes up for you? Make that shape. Make that shape. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Take a look around if your screen hopefully is on uh, gallery view so you can see lots of shapes at once. And just notice these shapes here. 
All right, what are, what are people noticing here? Feel free, to, feel free to unmute and share what you're noticing here in these shapes. A lot of fists. A lot of fists. Tension. Tension. Beautiful. Arms are up. Uh huh. I see also a lot of blocking energy. Blocking, stopping. Yeah. All right, let's shake that out. We're going to do a few of these just to kind of notice what comes up. All right. Let's do, close your eyes, take a moment to take a breath, let that one go. Let's do diversity. Go ahead and make the shape. Diversity, what comes up for you? It can be a moving shape if it doesn't feel right to make it static, if it feels like it needs to move, feel free to do that too. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. And any noticings, feel free to unmute and just pop out if you notice any noticings that you want to share that you're seeing here in the shapes. Flexibility. Mm. Any other noticings? Movement. Movement. Space. Beautiful. See also some softness there, some tenderness seems to feel, and flow, flow, fluidity. All right, beautiful, let's let that go, shake it out. Do a few more. All right, let's do, close your eyes or soften your gaze. Let's do conflict. What comes up for you with conflict? And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes and let's notice. Feel free to popcorn out. What do you notice? Or you can use, use the chat, but it's hard to chat and to... <laughs> More <laughs> static, not fluid. Uh-huh. Opposition. Uh-huh. Seems to be a little more tight. Tension. Tension. Blocking in the chat. Thank you. All right, let's let that go. Let's do closing your eyes one more time. Let's do synergy. Synergy. What does synergy look like in your body? Feel like what's the what's the image that comes up for you around synergy? All right, and observations, noticings, what are you seeing in these images? Relationship. Mm. Relationship, beautiful. What else? Integration. Mm. Connection. Connection, integration. Unexpected. Unexpected. All unexpected right. abundance. Ah, thank you. Unexpected abundance. Thank you. All right, let's shake that one out. Let it go. We're going to do two more. Closing your eyes, letting your body shake, breathing it out, not getting stuck in anything here. Ah, breakdown. Breakdown. Holding that image, break down. When you feel ready, go ahead and open your eyes and even peek if your eyes are covered, you can peek out and just take a moment to see some of the other shapes. What do we see here? Any noticings here from breakdown? Threatening. Can you say that one more time? Threatening. Threatening. Crumbling. Mm. Pressure. Mm -hmm. Falling apart. Um, falling apart. 
falling apart. Off center. Um, off center. Down, down, down. Uh -huh. And holding that image, I just want to invite you, you can close your eyes again and now move to breakthrough. What does breakthrough look like? Just from that place, what does it feel like? Oh, Notice in your body, what does it feel like? Oh. There's a lot of stoic stances in the previous one. Opening. Oh. Opening. Light. Oh. Mm. Right. Oh. Felt down, then we feel light. And I just want to invite you to toggle back and forth between your two images. Between the breakdown to the breakthrough. What does that feel like? Oh. Liberation. Liberation. I'm hearing some deep breaths coming through. Relief. Opening up. Release and oh. opening. Wonderful. Expansion. Oh. Connection. Connection. Mm. Mm -hmm. Letting go. Mm. Letting go. What are we letting go of from the breakdown to the breakthrough? Or what's expanding? What feels like it's changing in your body when you're moving? Possibilities. Say it again, please. Possibilities. Possibilities. Your thoughts. Thoughts. The past. Letting go of the past. Uh -huh. Discomfort. Discomfort. There's a change in structure. Uh huh. Beautiful. Something worth writing home about. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Something worth writing home about. Great. Thank you all. And there's some more beautiful comments in the chat. Breath, expansion, relief, a lot of shifting. So a lot of what I want to focus on, thank you all, first of all, for participating in that. It's also a little bit vulnerable and risky. So thank you for trying that on and trying that out. Uh, let's just take a breath and release all of that first. So yeah, our bodies share a lot of wisdom. They have a lot of wisdom for us. And we could notice, and I can notice really, when I'm in those different shapes, Oh, this is really revealing to me. What's, what's my inner workings? What's happening for me? The difference between fight and even in conflict and synergy and diversity, how it changed and then break down to breakthrough, really noticing that. And this is a lot of where I think for me, what shifts with conflict. And I really had to do some unlearning and uplearning for this for myself. Like I had to do some unlearning to see the conflict could actually just be diversity which could be fluid and that out of conflict could come synergy, integration, connection, those beautiful words that were people were sharing in their shape or out of conflict can come breakdown, fight, con you know, the, 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 the falling apart. So what makes the difference between the breakdown to the breakthrough? That's what I really want to invite us to explore together. Um, even more deeply in this workshop. So I'm going to offer a very simple tool that for me has been incredibly profound. Um, and, and then we're going to dive into some small groups to talk. And can you all see this? And all came through. Comfort zone, stretch zone, panic zone. And I call this the zones of awareness. The zones of awareness and the zones of learning or not learning. <laughs> So there's that sweet little bear hanging out or cat um, in the comfort zone, just relaxed. And folks know about the comfort zone. It's where I'm comfortable. I know things, they're familiar to me. I can relax there, it's easy, they're my habits. Um, it's a nice place, my body can mostly feel relaxed there because um, it's familiar, it's known. And then I can step out of that comfort zone. If I want, I can't learn or grow there though, because in my comfort zone, because I know everything already. So I have to step into my stretch zone. That's the space of the unknown. And like that giraffe, I could stretch my whole neck or I could stretch a little bit. I could choose how much I'm stretching. And the cool thing is that the more I hang out in that stretch zone, the more my comfort zone grows. The challenging thing is that stretch zone is uncomfortable. It's a place I don't know. It's a place that's unfamiliar to me. I'm engaging with that, that which is unknown and I'm engaging with my heart. And I'm able to do a lot of good listening though in my stretch zone and listen to myself and express myself. And then there's something called a panic zone. And that panic zone is where I've stopped listening. I'm no longer able to listen. I'm no longer able to express myself from my heart. I'm no longer present to the situation. 
And I can look a little bit like panic, like this, you know, I can look like the squawking chicken. It could be very active looking or it could look very small. Like I've just stopped talking. I've just silenced myself. I built a wall. Um, all different ways the panic zone can look. But what defines it is that I'm no longer able to be present. I'm no longer able to listen. And therefore, I'm no longer able to learn. However, it's an important thing. There's no judgment about it. Because in some cases, I'm not able to do that. And I want to respect and honor that. And recognize that when I'm there, and as long as I stay there, then the listening, the learning, the connection, the synergy, is not going to happen. And so a big part of the challenge or the difference can be, can I work with my conflicts in the stretch zone? Or am I working with my conflicts in the panic zone? When I'm in that panic zone, and I'm in that conflict, it's going to lead to breakdown. And if I can be in my stretch zone with it, that will lead to the breakthrough. That will lead to the synergy. That will lead to the connection. So before I go for, forward, I just want to ask if there are any questions about that um, model or anything like that, because we're going to dive into some story sharing in small groups to look at this a little bit more deeply. Any questions, or does that feel clear? Just one thing to add to that also is that everyone's zones are different. So what might be, for me, my panic zone, the situation, for Richard, that could be Richard's stretch zone. And for Vinita, that could be Vinita's, panic, uh, Vinita's comfort zone. The very same moment, just based on our diverse life experiences. Um, also for me, maybe in the morning I had my good breakfast, I had a good night of sleep, and so something that was challenging, I'm meeting it in my stretch zone. And conversely, I had, uh, I'm very drained out, I haven't had a good exercise, I haven't spent time with people that I love, and then that very same situation I'll meet in my panic zone. So these are all malleable, they're not, and they're, and they're dynamic. Um, and so I just wanna invite that also. We're not fixed in any zone, and from moment to moment, I can bring that self-awareness. Oh, am I in my stretch zone? Ooh, I'm feeling myself on the edge of my stretch zone, boom. I haven't drank any water or gone to the bathroom for a while. Maybe I need to go take care of my body and then come back more firmly in my stretch zone. Or, wow, you know, um, we can just notice these things and with each other as well, supporting each other to notice as well. Okay. So I'm not seeing any questions and, or any comments in the chat about that. Then I think we're going to go into groups of three. Um, we'll have one group of four uh, or maybe two groups of two and then... Um, the rest will be groups of three. And what I wanna invite you to do is to share a story from your life, two stories. You're gonna get two chances to share. One story is a time where you chose to get in your stretch zone, where you were in your comfort zone, something was familiar, and then you saw I, you chose to enter it, that stretch zone, that uncomfortable place. Could have been during a travel or meeting someone new or trying to learn something new or trying a new food. It could be anything, but a real story of where you entered your stretch zone. And tell, tell the group, tell the people what, what happened in that. And the second story I'm going to ask you to share, and I'll share these prompts, so don't worry about trying to remember them. The second story I want to ask you to share is when you were in your panic zone, something happened could have been some kind of emergency, could have been some kind of challenging situation. You went to your panic zone and then you found your way into that stretch zone. You found your way to listen, to turn it around to something where you could connect. Does that sound good? All right. All right, friends, well, off you go. I'm gonna set up our rooms here. And um, oh, where's my function? Here we go. There we go. And invite you to Take your time. We'll have about five minutes each, four minutes each to share. And I'll give you time reminders throughout so everyone gets a chance to share and um, really have a, have a moment to drop in. Okay? All right. Off you go. And I'll share the questions again. Take a moment to settle in when you get there and get started. Okay, great. Everyone is out. I can 
can pause the recording because we can't go back. So I welcome you forward. Here we are in this forward <laughs> moment. <laughs> so welcome forward. <laughs> Just want to make a few minutes for any noticings. You're welcome to put things in the chat. Um, if you'd like to speak out loud, we have some minutes to hear some folks. Mm -hmm. What came up for you? What did you notice about those stories? Uh, choosing to stretch, trying to come back to stretch from panic. I'd love to hear uh, from, from some folks. What did you notice? Hmm. I, it, it seemed like the first story was easier to find than the second one. We, mm. the three of us, uh, talked about that. Mm. Thank you. Can you share a little more? What made that one easier? What made the other one more challenging? Sure. Um, the idea that in, I'll, I'll speak for myself. That's uh, the, 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 the part where uh, it's, it's easiest. Um, there is some, some aspects of panic can be really, freezing or blinding or just shortcut memory. Uh, perhaps we've done things well, who the hell knows. Uh, I wasn't totally there and I was in a process of escaping or uh, recomposing different things to you know, put some distance, uh, but in any case, not very present, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So this sense that somehow for panic, at least for me, most what comes immediately is, yeah, going back to comfort and self-care. Uh -huh. um, being on that edge where it's productive to go back and forth between losing control and uh, feeling safer, that's really hard to find those edges. And um, I think one, uh, an another thing we shared was talking about theater and how for each of us in some ways it helped us um, be more dancing and playing on that edge between losing control and having some. Uh -huh. So that's the short story anyway. Thank you so much for that. Other folks want to share? I find uh, we go to panic zone, like for, for me, go to panic zone when the imagination is at its highest, what all can go wrong. Mm -hmm. As long as stay, in touch with reality, that's all about stretching. Panic is going into a whirlwind of imagination, what all can go wrong. Yes, thank you. I have a friend who says, worrying is like praying for what I don't want. Um, and I love that phrase, like, to stay present to what I do want, to stay present there is a very different thing. Yeah, thank you, Vinita. Any other observations about stretch, comfort, panic for you and the learning that's happening? Yeah, please pop sense. in. And you can also use the chat if there's more you want to say. What I sense I think in our group was that uh, you were mentioning comfort zone can be grown if you stretch enough, but also the stretch zone Will, will grow and become more comfortable if you are handling panic in a way that you can still, so that you don't freeze, you don't uh, stop listening, you don't stop acting. So it's very much about how you handle yourself, how you show, your, show up, and then it's like that surprising new vocabulary that you can take on and it becomes part of your arsenal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There was someone else who also had something. Yeah, please, Anne, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I, my thought was that, and, and really it's a personal thing rather than all of us, was that when moving into the stretch zone and doing things that I hadn't, you know, challenging myself and stepping out, stepping out of my comfort zone, um, I found that um, I, missed, I didn't have some of the skills to do it well. And um, so it's stressful. And then when I'm stressed, I don't, I, I I wasn't able to behave well enough around other people. So I have a lot more skills to learn and strategies to learn. Mm -hmm. And then coming back 
into the um, stretch zone from kind of a panic and being burnt out. Um, and again, in, in needing to kind of withdraw, but also to reflect and learn from that. So lot, a lot of learning about how to do it differently another time mm -hmm. and hopefully be able to take that forwards. And I think that those, those kind of, the burnout things were, were common in, in our group to some extent and the physical discomfort of that and unknownness of it. Yeah, thank you, Anne. Yeah, it's very powerful actually for me because one of the big learnings I've had is to not demonize my panic zone, not mean that now I'm bad or I'm wrong or I'm incapable or it's actually just part of my physiology. I will have a panic zone. I have an amygdala and it's going to send me into fight or flight sometimes. So if I can accept that, the moment I can begin to notice, oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm freezing out or oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm uh, attacking someone or blaming them, or this is what I'm doing. I'm blaming myself. Oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm going out for the cigarette or the drink rather than facing the situation. Okay, without judgment, just noticing, oh, this is what's happening. what's happening. The more I can start to notice that, then I can say, okay, do I wanna stay there? Which is okay, you know, it is, it means probably I'm not gonna connect with this person or work the thing out. And sometimes that's what I can do. That's the best I can do in the moment. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, take some breaths get some water, recharge myself, and then go in and, okay, now I'm ready to listen. Now I'm ready to share. Now I'm ready to listen to you. I'm ready to listen to myself and I'm more present. And so just noticing that, that these are different things and, and, and maybe giving myself not to live on that edge, you know, like uh, Kathleen, where you were saying, that edge is a hard place. It's a really wobbly place, but can I get more firmly and comfortably in that stretch zone? That kind of deeper, okay, yeah, I'm ready, I'm open, I'm ready to, to do this work, I'm here. Um, and give myself that permission. And then my comfort zone, I saw some beautiful things here in the chat about like the need for rest and self-care and recovery is so crucial. If I'm gonna be able to also like replenish myself and then work those stretch muscles again. And I really do think about it as like, you know, I have a physical workout I also can have like an emotional workout. I can also have a, a, a spiritual fitness and an emotional fitness routine, a conflict fitness routine that can actually prepare me more so I can be more in my stretch or notice maybe even a little bit more quickly, oh, I'm going into panic. Oh, I'm noticing I need to take a pause so I can come back into stretch again. Um, there's some beautiful questions coming in. Does the modern culture keep us on the verge of panic? Um, physical, thank you, the workouts, yes. Yeah, and I think that's a great question. And I was just about to move to that too, in the sense of like, what are the things that make it hard for us to get in that stretch zone? And I was gonna invite from the chat and modern culture the person who asked that too, you're welcome to share your reflections on that too. But what are the things that make it difficult for us to, to stretch um, internally, in ourselves, interpersonally, in our relationships and systemically? And Hoon, I see you want to say something. So yeah, we'll have, again, you can use the chat and please speak up. So Hoon, and then I see uh, Kalu. Yes, so for, please go ahead. Um, in our group, can, am, I, am I mute or? Uh, you were talking, yes. Now you're okay, there. right. Um, I think what we mentioned in our group or what I mentioned in our group uh, was that I found that a lot of the stress um, of the recent months um, in what I've been doing um, in terms of stretching and maybe hitting the panic zone or maybe hitting burnout, I think more than hitting a panic zone, um, is that I found that it's actually embodied itself physically which has been a complete surprise to me. I didn't expect that. Um, but um, by that I mean, um, at the moment, I'm just full of aches everywhere um, in a way that has never happened to me before. Um, so I will ache, I'm aching now. I can feel it in my shoulders, um, at the bottom of my shoulders. Um, when I wake up in the morning, I ache. Um, and um, when I go to bed, I ache. 
I ache at night. Um, and, and it is very physical. It's a very physical feeling, um, which has, and obviously I've had st men emotional stress before, but that's always kind of manifested here. But this is the first time that stress has manifested physically. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm a doctor. Um, I started having migraines for the first time in my life. I don't suffer from migraine. I never suffer from migraine. But at the very height, I started suffering from migraine. But not only that, it manifested itself physically because my this eye is swelled up. Uh, my daughter noticed it and I stopped being able to see out of it properly and that shocked me It shocked me a huge big it shocked me a lot because I thought I didn't know what was happening to me because I thought Am I having a stroke? That's gone now and I am hoping these aches will go away soon But I thought that I wanted to mention that from a personal perspective. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And yeah, I really hear that. And I also can understand how when conflicts and stress get lodged in the body, it does affect the body in those ways. So thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. And we can discuss a little bit how we release to, you know, as we are moving forward to, to continue this conversation. Thank you. Um, Kalu, you wanted to also share something about what stands in the way of getting into that stretch zone? Yeah. Yeah, so for me, my experience has been that um, as a very intuitive, empathic little child, I was able to share things that maybe were to naked or seem too raw for people that were around me. So then um, I started kind of like not sharing what I was thinking or seeing just because uh, people around me, especially adults, would not be able to handle what I was sharing even though I was just a little girl and just expressing my very raw nature opinion of what I was seeing, feeling, experiencing. So um, now as an adult, I see that it's still hard for people to, to hear that, like, and that gets in the way of us, well, at least that gets in my way of stretching because sometimes I just like, you know, I stop just sharing and speaking uh, what I'm seeing and feeling. So, and as a woman also, um, Sometimes when I've shared what what I'm sensing, I'm being judged as being emotional or being, you know, like problematic or, you know, all these little labels that just because of my gender, I'm just like, um, they attach to me or somebody else attaches to me. So then um, that gets in the way of me being able to stretch just because I don't feel safe on sharing and experiencing. So that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kalu. Yeah. And you're touching on some really powerful things, you know. On one level, you're touching on some of the systemic elements, right? Gender and how we get socialized and what becomes acceptable. And someone asked earlier, is our modern culture kind of living in the panic zone? And for me, that's mostly yes. There's a very little like socialization towards listening, towards presence, towards really not absorbing. Sometimes as, as women, sometimes we're taught, oh, I should absorb people's feelings, which actually makes it very hard for me to stay in my stretch zone because I'm taking on something that's not mine. And then I get heavy and then I get, and then it disconnects me from myself, becomes too much to bear. Um, or on the opposite side, socialize, being socialized to not listen to people, to not feel to not connect um, through all kinds of institutions and structures. And I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads that people are relating to that, right? So yeah, thank you, Kalu. You're touching on so much there and what you shared. Um, 
And just to pick up a few more things that really make it challenging sometimes to stretch or be in that stretch zone, right? It's like the negativity bias. Like I'm walking into the situation also assuming things are not going to work. Uh, it's hard for me to stand. I'm already in my panic zone if I have that negativity bias. So I'm like, that's also something that gets socialized, constructed, practiced through different systems. Um, the inner critic that's inside of me can also be part of that. The inner judge that's judging me, then it goes to judge someone else in this effort to try to create safety, but it doesn't work, right? I still feel disconnected. Um, so yeah, there are so many factors that can stand in our way from from being able to get into that stretch zone, past history also. Well, I was with this person before and this is what they did, so now I can't trust them. So I've already walked into the situation in my panic zone because I'm not in the present, I'm in the past. And one of the things that feels really important, and let's get into the, the second part of the conversation, what, what helps you move through that? What helps it make a difference? What, how do we work that muscle, that spiritual and that emotional fitness muscle, that stretch zone muscle, how can we work that differently and how can we work that together in community? Um, and I'm wondering about that too. Again, feel free to use the chat. There's some more things there in the chat. It's hard for me to keep up with both the chat and the conversation. So I'm trusting those of you in the chat are putting in what you need and also receiving some good responses. Um, but if there's a question, please feel free to type in. Yes. Thank you, Claire, for these wonderful reflections on what does stretch zone look like in panic zone, comfort zone. Yeah, sense of safety. Mm -hmm. How do we co-create that sense of safety for ourselves and with each other? What makes that possible? And yeah, please pipe, pipe in again. Feel free. Um, I just, I just remembered that one of one of the things of um, coming back out of the panic area was um, and, and wanting to avoid going there again because it was, it, I wasn't. I hadn't got myself supported well enough and that I would need, and I suspect this is probably quite common, but I would need to get more support for myself to have an ally. Um, and I, I'm not managing to get that to happen. I'm kind of somehow, that seems a bit of a step too far. <laughs> to my comfort zone. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Yeah. But what you're naming is so crucial, support. Support is a big way that I get from my panic zone into my stretch zone. Look at this large circle you manifested, Anne. <laughs> you have a whole circle here of allies. And it's, it, does, it does seem or it is that conflict and trauma and things to, that bring us back and into panic zone often happen in relationship and it's usually relationship that helps us heal not that we don't do things by ourselves. you know the self-care of, of being with ourself and presencing ourself however that is that we need but uh, there's the there's the, often the belief that we're all alone and you know it's just this is my thing and I have to deal with it but you know what it's our thing <laughs> <laughs> and it's so much easier to deal with together because we all have this thing, <laughs> different versions of it, but there's so much to, uh, alike, you know. Every person here who speaks reflects me in some way. And, and uh, you know, I can, I can feel my heart resonating with your movement and expanding. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. A few other voices in here. What helps you get into that? What, how do we work with this? Yeah, Gail, please go ahead. What helps me to get into a stretch zone is to remind myself of my intention. That in life, in general, I don't feel good when I'm in a panic zone. I don't want to be there in my life. It's my intention, and you could call it even my spiritual practice to be in a stretch zone, which doesn't mean I don't go into panic zones, and I do. However, pulling myself back with choice um, 
there's a consciousness there that I hold in my life, which is why I'm even in this workshop, <laughs> because of that consciousness, that there's an intention to be in a place of connection with all human beings. And when I'm not there, I want to get back to it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gail. Yeah. Yes, please, Claire, go ahead. So um, I'm going to use just in my own imagination of an actual situation that's that's alive right now. Um, and I'm I'm I think the challenge for me is to be able to stay absolutely in present tense. So when reaching out to have to try and have a need met with somebody and then getting what might feel to me like the, like the worst possible response. So then I'm in the panic zone. What I'm practicing to varying degrees of success, presumably, is is just saying, oh, I wish, like for instance, I'd remember to say, gosh, I'm noticing that I'm really beginning to panic now with the person on the phone, the friend, rather than trying to manage the panicking. So I was hoping for this, I'm noticing this, I'm panicking, I'm afraid that this means dot, 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 and, um, and I don't know what to do right now. Like, I'd love to be able to replay a conversation that I recently had to see what might have happened next if I'd actually been able to stay that present that I could monitor out loud all the little bits that were happening inside me. I'm, yeah, I find, I'm really curious about that. I wish we could replay things. Thank you for that, Claire. We're going to actually go into little groups here, pairs in a moment, just to kind of see if we can workshop with each other a conflict and, and see. And one thing that's really important to me to remember is it's never too late. Even if I couldn't do it in the moment, even if in that moment I went into my panic zone, I have another chance. I have my lifetime. I have time. So I have an opportunity to try again, to put out that invitation, that intention again, and say, let me try again. And a lot, a couple other tips of things that really helped me in that to come into stretch is to create a container, you know, something that has a little bit of ritual in it. And that change, because, you know, I, I love Einstein's quote, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. So if I keep entering it the same way and it keeps falling apart, well, maybe I got to try entering it a different way. So thinking about creating a ritual space, a container with agreements, with intentions, with, with like practices, like we're gonna breathe, we can use our bodies, we can shake, we can be kind of weird, it's okay. Because if I wanna do something stretchy, it's weird, it's, it's out of my comfort zone, so that's okay. Another lovely little tip for me is to see if the judgment that I'm having or the assumption I'm having, can I turn it into a question? Could I just turn that judgment into a curiosity? See, I'm wondering about this. Is this what's happening for you? Can you share more about that? Um, some, some uh, I think Byron Katie uses the story, or, or Brene Brown says, the story I'm telling myself about what this is, is. So I'm just owning, there's a story, and I can change that into curiosity. And the third tip I'll just offer is around maybe that shift to, to, to gratitude, to noticing, huh, there's a channel or a tape running inside. Can I enter the conversation from a place of gratitude for who this person is or what the situation is? Can I notice that and let that kind of infuse the space so that I'm working with a different, different uh, source of energy and different source of support in that? So we have some tips there, some judgment into curiosity, some accessing support. Um, as Claire was sharing, trying to be very present. As Gail is saying, trying to really bring back it to my intention, naming that out loud, you know, and setting some rituals of space. So we have a little bit of time left. I want to invite us into groups of two this time, just a pair. We'll just take about three, four minutes each to maybe just share, touch on a conflict that's alive for you. And is there a way to bring this conflict into the stretch zone? Maybe you already have some ideas and maybe your partner can also offer a few. We'll just take a few minutes each and then we'll come back and 
and harvest this, learn from this, and then close up our workshop. Does that sound okay? Just want to invite us, because for me, everything, if it's not practical, it's not worth it. So <laughs> I'm going to put you off into pairs um, and give you a little time to just workshop one conflict. doesn't have to be the most hardest, difficult one, because sometimes we have to start with something that's a little bit easier so we can build the muscle. You know, we don't lift the 50-pound weight at once. We start with five pounds, and then we build the muscle, and then we can go forward from there. So pick a little conflict something that you want to work through and to stretch and uh, ask your partner for some support. All right, off you go. I'll let you know the time again. Welcome forward, Welcome forward, everyone. Try to summarize a bit in our chat here so some folks can have that. And I want to give a few minutes here for in putting in again in the chat just things you notice in that conversation. Um, we'll move into our closing. So if you put it in the chat, that would be wonderful. <laughs> more learnings harvesting we'll take a moment here if there's anything you want to share i i'd like to i have a habit and i want to own it i want to i want to own it out loud i have a really bad habit of of making myself wrong if something doesn't go right um and that makes it really painful because not only do you have the disappointment of the thing not going the way you hoped or wanted, but then you also make yourself feel like it's all your fault. I do. I make it feel like it's my fault. That's an old habit. Uh, it's excruciating. And it makes me dread asking for what I need because if it doesn't work out, I know what the default setting is going to be. And it hurts like mad. So I just want to, I just, that's my confession. <laughs> I want to get past that. Thank you for that, Claire. Thank you. I want to tell you you're not alone in that. I wonder if people might, if you might wiggle your fingers, if you resonate with what Claire says or have shared that experience. Thank you, wiggly fingers. Yes. <laughs> and I want to share that that attacking of self is kind of, it is a panic zone, right? Because, and I'm hearing you say that, it keeps you from being present, keeps you from asking for what you need. And so that opportunity, can I bring gentleness? Can I breathe in some gentleness for myself? Can I breathe in some compassion? That's also another way to come back to stretch. I'm doing what I can. I'm gonna breathe in some compassion. And I know what, I have more chances. I have more chances, even if it didn't work this time, I have more chances. Yeah. One thing that's also been really important to me in my own learning journey, and I'm calling from my parents' home in Chicago. I've come to visit them during COVID um, because I haven't seen them in months. And one of the things that's become really important to me is to share the tools, to share the practices I'm using with the person I'm having the conflict with, to not try to carry all the burden of solving the conflict on my own. It's not possible. It's not possible. So the more I can share, hey, can we create a container together? What do you think about this agreement? Does this work? Can we try to practice this together? How do we help each other listen better? Maybe I can reflect. I won't say exactly what I think first. I'll reflect what I heard you say first. And then, and I share that. It's all out loud. It's not a little magic trick I'm trying to do in my head and guess and hope that the other people inside will just figure it out. And no, I make it visible. I share that. And the more that container can get shared together, the more we're building it together, just like we're doing right now, the easier it is. Because then we're each carrying our part of the responsibility. I'm carrying my part and the other person's carrying theirs. And then we can actually move forward, or the group, or whatever, as a group. Last few sentences here, and then we're gonna close up. Thank you for the comments in the chat again. Yeah. 
someone who's triggered by that way? Well, I mean, some, thank you for the question, Deb. I, I would say if someone feels triggered by that, then it's probably not the right time to try to get into the conversation. I would say, okay, it seems like right now, us talking, our ability to listen to each other and really hear each other is compromised. So maybe you can let me know when there's another time we can come back around when we both feel like we're more able to really hear each other. Um, I personally, that's what I would do. Because uh, it doesn't really help if someone's already triggered just by me saying, hey, could we slow down and have a conversation? That means, boom, that we're not ready. We're not ready for that. We're going to just have that conversation in panic zone. <laughs> so, and that really won't lead to the connection that I seek. Um, one more comment. Let me just say one more thing, Tenson, and then I, I, I would love to hear your last comment. And we'll close up. It's just that I, a really good signal for me is I know I've been in stretch zone if I feel closer to the person on the other side of the conversation, if I feel more connected, or the person, the situation, the group, whatever, on the other side of the conversation, or myself, I feel more connected. I know I've been in panic zone if I feel more separated, more distant. Again, not wrong or bad, no judgment there, just a noticing, and then maybe a noticing of when to try again or what to do again, if we can. And Tamsin, your comment, please. Oh, sorry, I wasn't meaning this as a last really important comment. It, it was just in response to that question that you were talking to, because I thought I had a similar thought earlier in response to something someone else said, and I was thinking about a recent example for me and noticing that when getting into that panic zone I, in, in relationship to someone else and something that was being triggered that being in that zone can, for me, make it hard to sometimes communicate in a way that's really sensitive and owning for the other, and so, and so then that that can escalate, that can like be misinterpreted, and it can just bounce off each other. So what I was thinking of earlier in this session, I suddenly had to like, ah, oh, maybe a useful tool is to think about like have some language available that I kind of know that I can go to, uh, which is really a way of speaking that's really owning the experience and just have that so that when I can't think straight, I can't access my whole emotional intelligence to think it, it's almost a script that I can fall back on to communicate until I, in order to get us into a safer zone where I might be able to do that, if that makes sense. But, and I had an encounter recently in which I afterwards, it wasn't, it wasn't big or terrible, but because I sort of said, no, you, you're, you, you're making me feel some, the afterwards, I then felt sort of guilt, like, oh, that wasn't fair. And I felt guilty and it was all managed fine. It was okay. But um, I just, it made me think, oh, that would have been really useful if I could have had a better way of expressing that. So I suppose that's just a suggestion. Thank you so much, Tamsin. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just, I'll just add one thing there, which is just that when I'm trying to create the container, the ritual space, to do that when I'm in my stretch zone, rather than trying to do it once we are already in the panic zone together, so that we have some of that to fall back on together is really beautiful. And also coming back to that I, that's a really good signal for me, is when I start speaking the you, or the they, or the we, I know I've already gone into my panic zone. So can I take a couple breaths, slow myself down, come back to that eye. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I want to just invite us into closing here. And there's so much more to share. I invite you into this like lifelong journey as it's been for me to work with conflict in that stretch zone to be in the space of breakthrough rather than breakdown. And um, I hope that you can share any of these tools and any of these practices, you can just draw three circles and talk about that with friends and family and coworkers and everywhere you go, because it really is very for people. Everyone has this. Everyone knows it. So I just really invite you to share. And I invite you to just put a hand on your heart and one on your belly if you're willing. Just take a moment here to take a breath and to allow yourself to have a little moment to breathe and, and give gratitude to yourself for having a comfort zone, for having a stretch zone, for having a panic zone, for being able to do this work in all of these ways, to do this play in all of these ways and to be in really like and I wonder if we can just close, sorry for all the background noise in my own house. I hope you can just take a moment to close and maybe each person as you're
signing off here before you sign off just to share how you're feeling now in a word or a phrase, just very three second um, sort of offering and then we can close up. So just anything you're leaving with and how you're feeling. Um, Hope, full. Thank you, Claire. And pop in whenever you're ready. Relaxed. Mm. Full. Better equipped. Connected. <clears throat> Connected. Ease. Grateful. Thank you. Fired. Tom. Happy. I'm also hopeful. Aware of the family I'm in and is in me. Thank you all so much. Thank you for those who put it in the chat also. Did we miss anybody who wanted to share? All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for the few extra minutes here as well. And really grateful for you all joining me today. May you have a blessed rest of your day, evening, weekend, wherever you're headed, the week. Yeah, much, much love and gratitude. Thank you for being on this path. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Yeah, you unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute you. your microphone. Feel free to unmute and say goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Benita G. Hold on. Hello. How are you?